Well, hello there, and welcome to the Dungeon Pub. This is Happy Hour, and this is going to be a slightly shorter video than what you have seen so far in this in this playlist. Now, what we're going to be talking about right now is ways to generate attributes. And if you're a newer player, which I assume you are because you're watching this video, or you know, if you're a DM, thank you for watching this. I don't know why, but might be having some ideas. But in any case, there are ways out there to generate attributes. And those ways, and those systems that are going to allow your character to have its most core statistics are strongly, strongly dependent on the dungeon master or mistress that you're going to be playing with. Uh, everybody who's ever sat behind the DM screen has a personal view about how, how this is going to go. And some of them prefer one way. Uh, others, like myself, prefer a different one. So, without further ado, let's let's get into the important stuff about attributes. There are three systems out there, three overall overarching ideas that DMs have been using for forever in order to generate attributes for the player characters, or and not even. And even NPCs get to do this sometimes when they're important. So wh which, when, which ones are they? Well, number one, you have the point buy system. The point buy system has been there forever, right? And you've maybe even seen it already. If you've played some RPG, um, something based on the D&D system, something based on the D20 systems, then you already kind of know what I'm talking about. Maybe you don't know it, but here's the core concept. You begin with an eight in every single attribute that your character possesses. So strength, charisma, you know, constitution, all of that, an eight. And ever s uh, afterwards, after you <laughs> allocate those, then your DM is going to allow you to possess a certain number of points which you can use to buy additional attributes for every single category. So that means that uh, if you have an 8 in strength and you want to have a 9, then you need to spend 1 point. But then if you want to have a 10, you need to spend 2. Right? If you want to have an 11, you need to spend 3. And it kind of ramps up like this all the way to uh, kind of 11, basically. And here's the point behind all that. If you, if you really want to make a, a very specific character, uh, or if you really, really know what you're doing, then this system is going to be perfect for you because you're going to have this idea in your mind. You're going to know what you need. You're going to know what you need to put in there so that your concept fits. You can maybe take that feat that you really, really want, or you can multi-class at the level that you want to multi-class. Um, it's also not that bad for beginner characters because it gets people thinking, uh, sitting down on the table going, okay, should I, should I get one more point in this? Or should I kind of roll it back a little bit? Uh, don't forget, this is also point sell. So if you roll back, you get to get your points back. Uh, that's that's quite all right. Uh, with that being said, though, the system does have a few limitations. The point by system kind of makes, mm, how should I say this, very cookie cutter characters in the sense that you are going to think of the statistics sooner or later in the terms of what do I need, what do I not need, and how do I go about all this. So if you're playing a character that requires strength and constitution, then you're going to dump other statistics to get those. And that obviously means that you're going to be good at something, but not that good at other things. I'm just going to say it all right, you're going to suck. So how do you go about all this? Well, the idea behind the system is that you need to mix and match. You need to have the right class with the right race, the right allocation of these attributes and the right uh, build in order to be the most effective. So if you're playing in a group with people that like to like to min max that like to uh, streamline and optimize a lot then you're going to notice that most probably they're going to be doing this and that's okay you know you can get into that and depending on your dm your dm might give you more points or less points uh, usually it's about 25 27 something along those borders um, if your dm decides that uh, he should give you more then there you go good for you uh, but moving moving past the point by system which has been done over and over and over then we get to two other systems that are uh, kind of a little bit more uh, more specific and my favorite one I'm gonna say right now the one that I use the most because I have I have noticed that it creates the most uh, opportunity for fun and role-playing and other other things that D&D is very very good at is the uh, the rolling of the dice okay so there are many many ways that you can do this but the one that is most accepted the one that um, people most go to when they want to do the the dice rolling system is for uh, four dice, uh, four dice six. Okay, so you have four separate uh, regular old dice sixes, and you you roll. Uh, other people do it differently. I usually do it nine times. Okay, so you get to do this nine times, and then you get to pick the ones that you you like. So that means that yes, uh, you can have you can have an eighteen. And the way that it works is you can, uh, as the, as a matter of fact, not you can, but you have to remove uh, the the lowest one, right? So you roll. Uh, you roll the four dice and then you remove 
uh, the lowest one that you rolled and that the total is what what you get so you do this nine times and then you get to pick which ones you're gonna use now obviously you're gonna pick the highest ones or maybe you have a different concept but this this allows for two things number one random chance because you can roll more than 118 you can roll 18 17 16 that means that your character is gonna have all these cool bonuses in the beginning and i'm okay with that as a dm i'm perfectly fine with that just because i'm i'm the kind of dm who likes to be uh, in control of what's going on not on a you know not on the first basis but rather in my mind i can always scale up or scale down I can always uh, I can always modify things. So that means that player characters don't necessarily have to be under the control of some system. Random chance can be applied applied to this uh, to this world. Also, this kind of allows for the opposite to happen as well, meaning you can roll poorly and maybe you're going to have a good roll here and there like a 16, a 15, but then you might have a few 8s and a 10 and an 11 and you know, three 12s and then you're going to like well, I'm kind of average. Well, yeah, that can also be fun. That can also be kind of cool, uh, especially if it if it drives you to make a different kind of character. This system is very, very good at breaking the mold of the standardized RPG, RPG playing and breaking the mold of cookie cutting and and streamlining and optimizing. And it just makes for so many, so many fun things. Also, I am uh, to a large extent a very kind and benevolent dm so if somebody uh, comes to me and says look man listen I, I rolled really poorly can i can i like roll twice more or maybe redo the whole thing i'm like yeah okay just because ultimately at the end of the day D and and all these games are supposed to be about making friends and, and having fun and exploring these these inner things so if you don't have the right tool for the job then then it's just not gonna happen people and people sometimes you know especially in the beginning for newer characters they don't like the concept and that they started off with or maybe they don't uh, attribute themselves to this character so you know they need a little bit of a nudge so this system is very very good for that it allows you to do so many things and lastly uh, because i i think you're at this point and <laughs> getting the idea lastly the last system that we're going to be discussing is the array now this is the standardized thing this has been going on for a long time in D, &D and an array literally means that your dm has prepared numbers for you and for everybody that's a player character on the table usually the array consists of 15 14 13 12 10 and 8 so you're gonna notice that you have you know a high one a slightly less high one you know in all the way down to an 8 and this is okay uh, now I'm gonna say this I I have used this before uh, I have used it in a game and it wasn't that bad as a matter of fact it's it's quite okay uh, to have this preset control onto what's going on this literally means that you're never gonna have a character that is outside of the boundaries of what you're building and it's also uh, very balancing for the party, meaning that the party is never going to have this one character who rolled all the 18s or min-maxed uh, to the best of their potential and everybody else is kind of left behind. Like Everybody is cut from the same mold and depending on how people chose to allocate, which is mostly driven by their class and race, then you know everybody's going to have the standard level of power, let's say, and that also works in the benefit of DMs that are not as experienced as they would like that are just now starting out into this whole DMing thing and it allows them to balance the, the encounters and the boss fights and stuff like that. So the array is essentially the basis of it, it's the backbone and uh, on the two sides of the array, on one side you have point by which is total control over the players, they can do uh, whatever they want with the attributes as long as they follow this one core core rule or alternatively uh, you can you can roll the dice, allow your players to roll the dice, stay there, watch them do it, have a lot of fun going, oh dude you got an 18 cool stuff and uh yeah again there is no such thing as a good or bad system there's no such thing as better or worse it all depends on three things really number one the kind of adventure that you're gonna have longer adventures adventures that are built on a large story tend to suffer under an array because after some some time people just get kind of bored and the dm has to kind of you know make do um Long adventures are okay with uh, rolling the dice because number one, that means that you're going to have a lot of character variety and a lot of uh, opportunities to explore that variety. And uh, they are kind of okay with uh, with having the point buy because point number two, you're going to notice that the players have a lot of a lot of say, meaning that if the adventure is the first thing that, that matters, then the players that are going to play it are the second one and if you have players that are more in tune with min maxing and wanting to make this this mathematical side of things really work for them and deriving a lot of fun from that then 
that's the system for them, irrelevant of the size of the adventure. And of course, ultimately, if you're playing a shorter game, if you're playing a game where you're going to have a lot of beginner characters and it's just going to be one or one or two dungeon runs and you kind of want to get him into the adventure, but then, you know, kind of hit him with the big one, uh, get him into the story more, then beginning with an array is actually very, very simplistic, very, very good for, for that kind of a thing. So, with that in mind, I have been your most humble bartender. I look forward to all your messages, all your emails. If you have some questions, then, you know, reach out, send us your send us your thoughts and go out there and actually do some research. You're going to find out a lot of systems have been built over the years, a lot of homebrew systems that are based on top of these three. And just go out there and again, if you're not playing D&D, then go out there and do that cuz it's really really good for you. Go go, go go play. Go. We're always going to be here basically. <laughs>